I was just getting a 90s music fix on uh, Spotify, listening to the album by Lit, Place in the Sun. The, um, something from 1999. Okay, so, I know I've talked a lot about movies lately, but here's another movie-themed episode. But first of all, Let's have some nerdy announcements. Um, a bunch of people, nerds in Connecticut, were probably having a lot of fun this week at Camp Anime, which is an actual outside con. And all the people that go there stay in cabins as opposed to staying in a hotel. I thought that was pretty sweet, uh, but I couldn't find anyone to go with, so I didn't. Regardless of whether or not I've been watching much anime lately, which I haven't. Um, but, that's beside the point. Um, NBC's Revolution debuts on Monday the 17th at 10pm. I'm very excited to see where this goes. What happens in the aftermath of a disaster that leaves us unable to use anything electric. Who knows? The show kind of explores it. Or it should. Um, the 28th marks the return of Fringe. Um, last night was the second episode in the new season of Doctor Who. I have yet to see either of them. But, oh well. Um, and October 10th marks the debut of the new series on the CW, Arrow, which is about the Green Arrow, and his rise, as it were. Okay, so today's theme is horror movies. See, I'm wearing my nice zombie shirt for that. Um... I really like I really like horror movies, but I have a very hard time willing myself to go watch them simply because I like films of said genre, but I don't like just sitting down for two hours watching people scream. Watching people run around and be stupid, like slasher movies and such. Though some of those are actually pretty good. Um, it really depends on what. Um, but I'd say, more often than not, stuff seemingly in the horror genre that would be considered comedy, such as the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, always a classic, just completely ridiculous and almost 40 years old, even though it doesn't seem that way, just because of how ridiculous and how naughty and how dirty everything is in the... But definitely one of my favorite musicals, if not one of my favorite movies. Tim Curry is amazing in whatever he does. Also, 28 Days Later, um, Danny Boyle's amazing film about what happens after some sort of viral outbreak turns everyone into zombies. And Killian Murphy's character wakes up in a hospital bed on the 28th day and doesn't know what's going on or where anyone is. It's very curious. So starring Christopher Eccleston as the deranged um, army general, or I don't remember what rank he was, but something like that. Um, definitely one of the most frightening movies I've ever seen. They do great stuff with music. All alike. Um, 28 Weeks Later is a fairly decent film too, but not directed by Danny Boyle, so it doesn't really have that much power. Um, not the same actors, None of the same characters. But definitely, 
another glimpse at what happens what happens as this epidemic furthers on only hoping that they could do 28 months later which they they have been talking about only if Danny Boyle comes back because I don't know what happened to the other characters or even if you just go back say like 28 more days later you know, because who knows if they're even alive at the 28 weeks mark. But to know that there are actually more people out there is also very interesting. Because you follow these other characters in the first movie so well, so spot on, that you forget that there may be someone else out there that went somewhere else to run away. But that's remaining to be seen, but definitely very the best zombie film for the modern age simply because of how realistic it all seems at least in 28 days 28 weeks definitely not as realistic John Carpenter's They Live another horror comedy but what it has is it's just pure cinema gold I mean it really is and having seen this at a Halloween midnight showing once with my friend Felix the Cataclysm, um, it's definitely a laugh a minute, wonderful, thrilling thing. John Carpenter also does all the music on it, which really adds to the mood of the movie and actually makes some of the more ridiculous parts seem actually at least a little scary. And that's good. Okay, and then back to horror-ish, horror, more horror comedy elements. You have Army of Darkness, and its predecessors, Evil Dead's 1 and 2. Um, very clever, very funny, very historically inaccurate. And seeing as Bruce Campbell pops up in almost all of Sam Raimi's movies, will we be lucky enough to see Bruce Campbell show up in Oz the Great and Powerful next year? I mean, that would be pretty awesome if he some kind of Ozian. Just my take. I don't know, maybe he's the woodsman that becomes the Tin Man. I don't know. Something. Something cool. Um, but definitely, um, horror genre has an issue because so many movies are just wasted gore, like constant gore. And it's like, I don't mind the blood, but blood and guts, but if that, you make it all that your movie is about, as in the Saw series, I'm not going to be a fan of yours. And I'm not going to think you're anything special. Um, also, recent film Cabin in the Woods mixes legitimate horror, sci-fi, comedy, action, lots of blood and guts, a crazy, crazy story, cameos by Sigourney Weaver, um, uh, something from the, definitely something from the mind of Joss Whedon, because it mixes all of these things together in this awesome, amazing thing. Um, it comes out on video, uh, in nine days. I can't wait to see it again. Um, and also, in what I was talking about earlier in my announcements, one of my favorite animes is Helsing, which is about organization in London that eradicates the impure souls of the living dead using this guy, Alucard, which is actually Dracula backwards um, for anyone who can't figure that out. Um, but uh, Alucard is a monster himself, and one of the worst monsters imaginable. So to use him to kill other monsters, that's a great idea. But who knows how easy it may be for him to rebel. Maybe he just doesn't care. Maybe he doesn't try. Um... 
the original the 13 episode series kind of it deviates from the original story in the manga quite a bit partly because the manga only just got recently finished like a couple of years ago I think um, but anyway it diverts from there and it doesn't end nearly as good as it began but it's still really cool well and that's why the the OVA or original video animation of Helsing exists Helsing Ultimate which follows really closely the story in the manga and is much bloodier, much darker, much more gruesome. And and with OVA, people that you spend the people making it spend a lot more time on every given any given episode for it because they're not confined by deadlines and such. It's just it comes out when it comes out. Uh, we're gonna maybe do this many episodes, but maybe we're only gonna do this many episodes. That kind of thing. I have not seen all of it. I only and I own the first four only because they are the only ones that came out stateside, at least on video. Um, I believe I've seen through number six, and each forty to fifty minute episode escalates to something much, much bigger, much, much more gritty, dark, crazy. Um, and as much as you will come to like Alucard, he still is quite a monster. Okay, now, now I will talk about the movie that I just saw this weekend with my friend, Michelle, my belle. That's actually her name. No, it's not. <laughs> but I'll talk about the film The Possession. Which I would call it Sam Raimi's The Possession simply because even though he only he he produced it and did not direct it, it looks it looks and feels very much like a Sam Raimi movie. Especially with the comedic elements in places you don't expect them to be. But unlike Army of Darkness and the, the like, um, or Cabin in the Woods for that matter, which Sam Raimi's not involved with, obviously, um, but there are comedy elements, but it is not a comedy. It is not a horror comedy. It is a horror movie about people that, on the side, is about people in real life situations. And two parents struggling to keep a family together through their divorce. We have two girls that react to the divorce in different ways. Um, a father that moved into a new house, hoping it would be a great place for the girls to stay with him. A mother that insists that when they go visit their father that he not serve them anything that did not grow on a tree. All that kind of good stuff, you know. Stuff people don't agree on. Stuff that maybe caused them to get divorced in the first place. Um, father takes his kids to a yard sale where he tells them they can get whatever the heck they want. And the youngest girl finds this box. It's like really big, really intricately like carved box. And doesn't show any signs of able to be open or anything. Um, but he says they can have anything, so of course she wants this box, why not? Um, and he gets a lot more than he bargained for. Um, the girl starts to have lapses in memory. She talks to the box. She won't let anyone else touch it. She'll, she brings it to school and starts beating the crap out of this one kid that tries to take it from her. Um, bad things start happening to other people. Um, it can't really be explained as much other than a young girl struggling with growing up. Until the father decides to take the box and throw it somewhere. Which, and... The girl freaks out and she runs away and she 
goes to find the box and she... And then she becomes full-on possessed. And there's no way to hide it. There is no way her father does not know at this point. He goes to seek help of some Jewish mystics. And ends up being assisted in the end by a young Jewish man played by Modest Yahoo, uh, who uh, knows a bit or two about demons and can't resist helping others no matter what the cost may be to himself. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> routine possession, um, it happens. Um, but I don't want to say any more about the movie because I already said a lot about the movie and I just want you to see it. Um, and all the regular family drama elements included in the movie act, and the comedy elements actually heighten the horror aspects of the movie because you feel like they're happening to real people. In, that's what they try to do with Paranormal Activity, but of course we're not thinking about real people when we're just watching a camera of people having these really bland conversations. Like That's not what we want to see in a movie. Paranormal Activity put me to sleep, by the way. I'm sorry if you like it, but I think it's one of the most detestable things I've ever tried to watch. And tr I mean tried because I could not stay awake. I fell asleep and woke up at the end of the movie and I didn't feel like anything had even happened. Says something about that. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to take care of this. If you know a good exorcist in your area or something like that, I might need some help. Um, I think that's all, really. So, have a good day. And also, if you do like horror movies, uh, I saw a preview for one coming out later this month, which would be House at the End of the Street, starring Jennifer Lawrence of The Hunger Games. I love that girl. Um, but yeah, if you have any comments, any suggestions, any other genres of movies you want me to focus on, particularly any more video game series you want me to talk about, favorite characters from things, favorite DC superheroes, favorite Marvel superheroes, favorite animes, favorite video games, things that I don't know about that I need to know about, just tell me. And I will nerd it up. Thank you for watching.